This segment is all about going to the most popular destinations in our state. And for us here in West Michigan, none might be more iconic than the Frederick Meyer Gardens and Sculpture Park. Many of you have been to the property before, but none of you have seen it quite like this. We never expected it to get to be what it is like today. I mean, it's just grown and grown and grown. What started as a bold vision back in the 80s has become a beautiful balance of art and nature. And this is the spot to be in at any time of the year. There's always something to see. The West Michigan Horticultural Society spearheaded this campaign in 1982. After years of planning and fundraising, they needed more support. And then in 1990, Betsy Borey, who was a member of the, the society, uh, she contacted Fred Meyer and said, hey, Fred, you know, we're looking for some property. Can you help us out? Fred and Lena embraced the idea. So they donated 70 acres of land along the East Belt Line on the southeast side of Grand Rapids Charter Township. Off we went to the races, basically, you know. Uh, the next year we broke ground and, as you say, we opened in uh, 1995. That was in April. Just a few months later, Ian Warnock joined the staff in November and he's been there ever since. I kind of kid on, they're going to take me out here in a, in a wooden box and <laughs> beat first. <laughs> in those 27 years, no one has seen the garden grow more than Warnock. More than doubling in size from 70 acres to 158, adding extra exhibits like the Lena Meyer Children's Garden, his personal pride and joy, and recently moving past the 13 million visitor milestone. A good number of them have walked right through the gates into the kids' garden. Yeah, well, should we go do the same well, thing? Let's then? go and do that. But you got to go through the, the kid gate. Are you saying that I'm a child? We're all a child at heart. Oh, that there I mean, go. I'm the biggest six year old there is. Well, then you better walk through me, it too. Me first, yeah. <laughs> I'm right behind you. But I used to be able to bend over a wee bit deeper when I was younger. Ah, didn't we all see? Yeah. Even I'm grunting like but, an old man. Yeah, there's a lot of grunting and groaning as you come, <laughs> come through. But then we're into the garden. And we've earned our place in the garden now. We have. Warnock is the lead horticulturist in charge of the children's garden since it opened on Father's Day in 2000. Now these are the 11 children, statues by Kirk Newman. And he was one of Fred's favorite uh, sculptors. Okay. And they're uh, representations of uh, children or grandchildren of employees of uh, Meyer. Warnock says he's always trying to think of new experiences for the kids using their basic senses of smell, touch, and even taste. But you have to eat the whole thing, no nipping. Oh, all right. All right. Go big or go home. Go, that's it. Go big it or go home. Like, it tastes like lettuce. Mm hmm. So let's see how it goes as we continue. Uh oh. So in the old days, they used to take uh, wads of leaves and chew them up and put them down in their cheek where they would have a, a sore tooth or uh -huh. a sore gums, right? How's your tongue going? Yep, and right on keel. Yep, there you go. As tools to tap into their expanded senses of wonder and imagination. So just run your, your hands mm -hmm. through the leaves here. What do you, what do you smell? I smell popcorn. Why do I? You, for real? That's that's what they call the popcorn plant. No way. It is right. <laughs> now it doesn't really grow popcorn. This, and this is one I should eat too, then, right? No, 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 no. But this garden, like the rest of the park, is not just about entertainment. It's also about education. As you walk around the, the lakes, you'll see that there's all these different uh, sort of quotes and uh, information. Uh, for the children to learn. Cool. So it's a bit like they're learning by osmosis. So they're not just soaking up the water, they're soaking up some information. Richard and Helen DeVos wanted to leave their prints on this property too, helping support its newest addition, the Japanese Garden. Designed by renowned artist Oichi Kurisu and completed in June 2015, this eight and a half acre exhibit sits in the center of campus, complete with bonsai trees. Nice how it's been set out on a, on a flat stone and raised up so it looks like a forest. Yeah, it does. A zen garden. So this is more, I think, like the ocean with the waves on it. And then you've got the, the swirls around the islands. And Warnock's favorite part. So now we're going up uh, a spiral pathway, which leads us up to the, the viewing hill. A full 360 degree view of the vast landscape. A time to pause and appreciate the tranquility and peace provided by Japanese culture. The amazing thing is, in the gardens right now, we've probably got hundreds and hundreds of people. 
but you almost feel like you're the only person in the garden. It, uh, yeah. You know, that's it's, what it's it all like. yours. Not too far away is the sculpture park, the garden's original centerpiece. 30 acres, hundreds of pieces, none more popular than the American horse. Inspired by Leonardo da Vinci and built by Nina Akamu, this horse stands 24 feet tall, eight feet wide, and was unveiled in October 1999. Warnock remembers that day well. It was at sunrise, and so it was in October, and it was the bronze was, was just sort of glistening with ice, uh -huh. and it sparkled. And man, it gave me goosebumps in my neck just watching the whole thing, you know. And trumpets were going, we, people were juggling, and it, oh, it was, it really was something. And so all we can leave is a legacy of what we can do while we're here. Fred and Lena Meyer might both be gone now, but their legacy and impact on West Michigan will withstand the test of time. A bronze statue immortalizing their existence captures them sitting and surveying their beautiful creation, something they would often do. It's a creation that started with this, the Lena Meyer Tropical Conservatory. The first building that we actually opened here, some of the plants in here have been here since day one. It's five stories tall, 15,000 square feet, making it the largest conservatory in the state. Not a bad place to explore, or even better, get married, just like Troy did in 2001. You're standing right where my wife was, Max. Oh, wow. You're my work wife now. Very, very cool. <laughs> Obviously not as pretty. But no matter what you do at the Frederick Meyer Gardens, the goal is to make sure you leave with a memory you'll keep forever. So it's just kind of cool to hear the people come and say, wow, look at that, and isn't that amazing? And just the, the wonder, especially from the wee guys, whenever they come in, it's like, wow. And it, it makes it a little more fun. But let's create a memory together. All right, what do we do here? All with right. a little selfie here at the Polaroid. Okay. Smile big, three, Cheese. two, one. And we end things outside here at the English Perennial Garden. This is the newest exhibit on the property. And as you can see, it is absolutely stunning. This whole place is absolutely stunning. I, I know a lot of you have been here before, but hopefully you learned something a little bit new as Troy and I moved through the mitten today. And moving, we did. We certainly got our steps in. There's a whole lot to see here. Troy and I are exhausted. We're gonna go catch our breath. We'll see you next time.